him here and hear what he's got to say. So thanks very much for being here and welcome. I didn't realize I was the first, uh, the first Nest spokesman, not the first thermostat speaker, though, ever, right? No, At least, okay. Okay, great. All right, well, hey, I, I have about uh, 20 minutes with you guys here this morning for a couple questions. I thought I'd just hit a, a couple points uh, on the, the, the Nest perspective on IT, data science, and the energy system of the future, uh, which we're trying to create, I suppose, uh, today, to the extent we haven't created it already. So, you know, when... We appreciate uh, a lot of what, what goes on here, what you uh, out there in the room, what folks all throughout the industry have done uh, by way of creating you know, our, our multi-trillion dollar energy system. Uh, it's an impressive bit of machinery you guys got there. Uh, some, some nice components. Uh, what we really focus on at Nest is, is really the end node. You know, we're, 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 we're at the home uh, level. You know, that's, that's what we that's what we know, uh, and our our aspiration, you know, to, to play a part in in the future here is to work, you know, both within this kind of autonomous end node, and you know, among those autonomous end nodes, in in service of uh, in service of the grid, you know, both taking taking input from the grid and giving input out to the grid to to help to figure out how we can optimally use capacity and you know provide the best experience first and foremost for you know the folks that that make up our grand society that are the consumers at the, the very end of the, the grid there. Um, and so when we, we think about the future, you know, we, we obviously, you know, I like, I like I, well, I guess I'm doing a quick survey of the room. If I, if I look across, I see about probably half of the folks saw the Jetsons the first time around. You know, the other, another, another uh, quarter saw them on reruns growing up, and another quarter have no idea what this is. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a helpful departure point when you think of the energy system of that end node on the grid. You know, the uh, folks have been thinking about this for an awful long time, what, what it could be. Uh, you know, you'll note when you see the Jetsons that uh, there was no talk of, of energy. And it's possible that this is just because they presumed, you know, that cold fusion and all the rest was, was long since resolved at that point. But I'm going to say that they, they didn't and that we're you know, actually overlooking some things. And there, there are other things that... Uh, you know, we'd say that we would overlook in the, the conception of the, the Jetsons' future there. You know, if you look at our, you know, humble Rosie here and you, you compare her to a Roomba, you know, again, far superior to a Roomba, but perhaps, I, I know it's uh, maybe not, not, not politically correct to go and, and assault cartoons for not being technically accurate in all uh, respects, but one of the things that, that I note uh, when you look at the energy system of the present as opposed to the energy system of the future, you know, what's, what's the difference and what's inconsistent in this picture is uh, you see the antenna, you know, she's got the, she's got the antenna, she's uh, receiving instructions from, from the outside, you know, the, the grid, the, the environment, the, the ecosystem there is telling her uh, what to do. Um, but, you know, when we all watch the show, obviously, you know, she seems to be making some on-the-spot uh, calls herself. You know, there's, uh, <laughs> there's a great deal of autonomy there within, within Rosie. Uh, but what's missing in order to make that happen, of course, you know, you take a look at this picture. You know, fine, fine bit of industrial design. Maybe they hit it very well, but I don't think so. You know, they're missing the sensors. Uh, you know, the... the energy system of the home, you know, the end node on the grid right now is, uh, as it's coming to evolve, as it's coming to give uh, greater potential uh, and greater results, you know, today even, is the product of uh, sensors, you know, throughout, uh, all, all throughout. So you look at, uh, you know, you look at our, our humble thermostat, we, we put, you know, a whole bunch of them uh, in there. That, that previous slide was actually a picture of some of the sensors at the, uh, the bottom window, if you tear this thing down and look inside. Uh, you know, we also at Nest have, uh, you know, as we think about the energy system of the future, we, we again get there by thinking not just energy. We take a look at our, uh, our humble smoke detector, which we also have, you know, packed full of, of sensors, uh, you know, carbon monoxide sensor, photoelectric uh, smoke sensor, humidity sensor, uh, you know, ultrasonics, light sensors, occupancy sensors. A whole bunch of interesting things, and there's a couple points that I, I want to make here. You know, first and foremost is that, and I'm going to hit this point a couple times over, is that, you know, folks, 
folks don't go out and, and, and buy, well, some people do, but you, know, you don't buy a humidity sensor uh, or you don't buy an occupancy sensor per se. And if you are nowadays, and some of us still do, and again, this, this room probably self-selects to some of the people that do buy you know, networked humidity sensors since I have done that in the past and recently too. This is for a fun project, but it's for another day. Um, you buy products, you know, you buy a consumer product, something that delivers another end. You know, the uh, Nest Protect, for example, uh, this is something that has an integral role in the energy system of the future, in, in the home, in the energy system of the present, in the home. Uh, and you get this stuff on the inside for free. You know, you bought a smoke detector, you bought a carbon monoxide detector, and packaging these products that folks are acquiring for, for other purposes full of sensors, this is what's creating the, the, new, the new lever of, of uh, potential. And there's some interesting things to think about how sensors work in the home. Uh, there's first and foremost the intra device, you know, the within a single device. Uh, again, with Rosie, we saw the two antennas coming out of the head there. The, the notion, perhaps, you know, to, to make the analogy to our, our present state of affairs is a system in which the cloud has the intelligence. You know, some data goes up somewhere in the cloud, some, uh, some computer somewhere, some server somewhere makes a decision about what should happen and then tells a dumb piece of hardware if all the connectivity pieces are working exactly what to do. You know, our, our vision is different. We think that given the volume of information, the volume of uh, devices talking with one another and the frequency uh, with which it's happening and also the intermittency with which uh, you know, connectivity still, still has uh, in the present, that you want devices to be pretty smart within themselves, some, uh, be able to take inputs directly and make decisions directly. It's how we built our products at Nest. If you look at, for example, you know, within our single device, leveraging multiple sensors, one of the cool things that we're able to do is, oops, sorry about that. You hate when your animations go faster than you do. Um, we leverage multiple sensors to make determinations uh, smarter. You know, so for example, rather a, uh, imagine that that stayed on this, uh, uh, the slide there for a bit. You take a photoelectric uh, uh, smoke sensor. You know, this is something that detects a fire very simply by looking at, I have a beam of light you know, coming from one end, coming to a receiver. If that beam of light is interrupted, something's happening. You know, I'm going to presume that that something is always smoke. You know, there's uh, another, uh, way that smoke detectors work in ionization smoke detector, those tend to be a little bit more false alarmy. You know, there's a, a, we went with a photoelectric uh, detector which has a reputation for not catching the, the quick burning fires. But what we did is we paired it with the heat sensor. You know, taking the inputs of a heat sensor and a photoelectric sensor can give us a warning of a fire earlier than a photoelectric sensor alone could. Uh, we, you may have seen uh, in the past week, maybe it was two weeks, it's hard to tell time nowadays, I have a one month old at home and I, they're all just blending together the days. Uh, we pushed a new software update where we actually have started, and this is taking the hardware, you know, which has, has its uh, smarts built in and we kind of made them smarter right in, in the product itself. We now leverage a humidity sensor to distinguish between you know, a steamy shower, you know, the steam could uh, also get in the way of the photoelectric sensor. Now we know the difference between uh, you know, a shower and, uh, and an actual fire. You know, these, this is leveraging the devices themselves uh, you know, within a single device, leveraging multiple sensors that are all packed into a product. You know, the product isn't the sensors, the product is something that does something for you uh, to make some intelligent decisions, uh, both about energy and, and other facets. Now, you know, I already spoiled my animation here by going too fast, but the, the next part is, of course, devices talking amongst one another in the, in the home. Uh, you know, sensors that are, are in one thing, giving information to another, making decisions, uh, and, and causing, uh, causing effects and interactions. One of the things that's kind of fun, you know, we have no affiliation with, with the uh, fruit company over, over at Nest, other, other than that uh, a, lot of our, a lot of my colleagues used to work there. Um, but one of the stunning things when you watch the keynote uh, just the other day is you had a uh, you know, CEO of the, the world's largest uh, uh, you know, technology company by market cap at least sitting up there and saying, there's a barometer in this thing. I, thought, I just thought that was, that was funny, you know, barometer, right? This is, this is a barometer as I know it, as, as most, most of you are familiar with it. I actually do have a barometer at home. Uh, some people either used to have a barometer at home, I don't know how many people still do have a barometer at home, but this, this is a barometer. Not a lot of people go to the store and say, I need a barometer. And 
get a single purpose uh, barometer and use its inputs uh, uh, to, to make decisions about their day anymore, uh, especially now that you have the weather app on your phone or apparently watch as well. Uh, those of us who are, you know, again, looking out at this audience, uh, inclined towards this, this kind of future node of the home, we, to the extent that we were going to purchase a barometer today for its own purpose to leverage the inputs, to leverage the, uh, the sensing of that barometer to help our products make their own decisions or to help us set rules and make decisions for our products might purchase something like this. This is the best photo I could find on a Google image search for a networked barometer. Um, I doubt, despite you know, our, our, our uh, intrinsic interest in doing things like this, I doubt many of, of you have these at home. I don't even have this at home. You know, this one I have is decorative uh, for the most part. This one I, I don't have. Um, I also don't have this one since they aren't shipping until next year. I'll think about it. We've got plenty of time. There are also some fine Android watches on the market, but they don't have barometers as far as I'm aware. Uh, when, you, when you think about all these devices together, uh, you know, it's from a, from a purchasing decision standpoint, if you are in the market for a barometer, and again, these aren't to scale on, on this particular slide, you're probably, if it's March 15th or, or, or further, and you haven't already purchased one of the many fine Android wearables in the meantime, uh, you're ending towards that end of the spectrum. You're not going to purchase one of, the, one of these things. So this is, the, uh, this is a, a input from devices that are uh, within the home, sometimes outside of the home, uh, but are seamlessly speaking with, with other devices, uh, new inputs on which to make uh, which that autonomous end node can begin to make some interesting decisions. So we, we come to uh, we come back to our our thermostat and how we think about these things. You know, one of the um, one of the core principles at Nest, and this this may seem pretty basic, but uh, is is probably important to reiterate, is that you know we're all just kind of talking about the energy system of the future. If we are uh, assuming that you know there's if we're talking about sensors everywhere, uh, devices making decisions, et cetera, et cetera. We think it's pretty interesting to think about the energy system of the future today, and I'll give you a couple examples. You know, this, is, this is actually a couple months old, this, this uh, screenshot. I've been using it for a little while. I should update it probably. Uh, looks like a population density map, as well it should for any consumer electronics product that you're actually trying to take mass market because this, this reflects the density of nest installations throughout uh, the country and throughout the world. It's worth noting at the time that we took this picture, I think nest was only legally sold in three countries uh, and yet you see dots all around the world. There's a, a healthy smuggling business of eBay shipments to people's American relatives uh, and being sent abroad. It's a uh, when you think about all the rest of the grid, you know all the other things that we're we're building together. Uh, once you get to the home, this is the the place where we lose that fiat power. You know we can we can decide how the substations go. You know we can decide where the uh, the transmission lines are going to go. We can even pick the uh, the the plants and the sources of, of central generation you know, ourselves in the en energy industry without you know sure with the public consultation you know and sure consulting with the regulators, but not. With each, within each and every home. One of the fundamental errors uh, that some folks who approach this uh, energy system of the future uh, make is the presumption that that's going to extend to the final node of the home. The home is, you know, in, in the American tradition and, uh, and abroad as well, somewhat inviolable. You know, you have to be invited in, uh, or at least you have to have a warrant, right? Uh, you're not... You, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's none of my business. But uh, you don't... Um, you do need to uh, get get yourself in there, and it's it's you're not going to have the leisure, you know, from the energy industry of just picking and choosing products for people. You need to work with what they have, or to you know invite them to to choose the products that are going to be mo most helpful. And so, talking about products that that talk with one another and some of the implications and application of them, them you know, for Nest, uh, again, talking about other wearables here. This is your Jawbone uh, does uh, some nifty things. You know, when you wake up. Uh, Jawbone, you know, lets lets your thermostat know that you wake up. You know, talking uh, either through the cloud or, or directly device to device. You know, if you drive some vehicles today, uh, they that are equipped with uh, uh, some of our partner software, you can uh, you know push. You can as you drive, uh, your vehicle can 
let your home know where you are relative to it. You know, the sensors now extend outside the home uh, to the people that occupy it to, to help the home make decisions about how to optimally consume its resources. And this is just, these are the considerations that are driven by consumer comfort and yes, you know, bill saving secondarily. There's also the, the fun part uh, of uh, how, this, how this interacts with the concerns of the grid itself. You know, it's, so for example, uh, Nest now works with, uh, with Whirlpool devices, so such as uh, washing machines, uh, to both to, from a convenience standpoint, you know, when you're making the message to the consumer, persuading them to, to uh, get intelligent products because they're in their own interest, uh, you look at things and you say, hey, I can have your wash run when you're not home, so you don't have the noisy washer running while you're home. Isn't that great? You, you leave the home, the sensors in your thermostat, and perhaps in coordination with the sensors in your smoke detector, and perhaps in coordination with the sensors in your watch or whatever else, know that you leave the home. We're going to tell things to get started now so we don't bother you. The other obvious implication of this, and this is something that's available uh, in Nest you know, starting uh, a couple weeks ago, is when you trigger a response event, when you, the grid, you know, are working with a provider such as Nest to say, hey, you know, we're, we're constrained for capacity on this day at this time, either it's a, a spur of the moment thing or perhaps it's part of your long-term capacity planning, your thermostat can, uh, can relay that message to your washing machine and we can curtail air conditioning, we can curtail uh, you know, certain wash cycles stopping at the right time uh, to provide greater capacity to the grid when needed in a seamless way that doesn't uh, impose upon consumers. We also do uh, you know, use, useful things, again, beyond, uh, beyond energy. When your Nest Protect uh, smoke detector detects you know, a smoke or, or carbon monoxide emergency, we work with certain networked light bulbs to, to let them know about it. Uh, you know, so your lights can start to flash red to augment your, uh, your alerts. Uh, again, think of the Nest as a station of sensors that are useful to all aspects of the, uh, the, the energy system of the home. You know, being able to better control the away status of your heating and cooling system, uh, being able to provide an additional input on temperature, humidity, light, et cetera, in other places in the home. But nobody's buying it as a sensor station. They're buying it because it's going to save their life. And also it has a cool path light feature at night when you walk by it. Any questions? We can talk about that more. But the uh, I come back to the the point of remembering that this is a you know, this is the edge, the very edge of the grid. You know, the final node, the final the final frontier. This is the part where we don't get to go by fiat. Uh, you know, where we have to persuade. And this is where you know we, data science kind of meets the the art and science of marketing. You know, and there's a temptation when we come up with cool hardware, cool new capabilities. You know, something that wasn't before possible to assume that it just, it gets adopted. And you know, when you think about uh, smart home, again, Nest doesn't, use, we don't use the terminology smart home. We, we think of more uh, a brand of a, a conscious home. The stuff that's sort of the simplistic smart home, you know, a sensor telling a piece of hardware to do something isn't too terribly new. As you know, a lot of you guys uh, know, you know, the technology has been there for, for decades, but it hasn't been adopted. And the key to adoption is twofold. One, it's you know, the better multi-purpose hardware, you know, a kind of packaging the sensors into something that are, are intrinsically useful, that are just doing their, their sensing role as an additional, as an additive uh, value to you. And two is, again, the, the art and science of marketing. You know, what we've done at Nest to drive the, the level of adoption that we've driven, uh, you know, extends beyond digital, extends beyond the smart. It goes to, you know, billboards uh, with excellent design as well on, on our billboards. It goes to Fire trucks, you know, we, we literally, we bought a fire truck and we, we painted it blue and we drive it around Home Depots and this is how you smell, sell smoke detectors in 2014. Uh, we also, you know, if you, if you bring your kids, you get a cool hat and temporary tattoos, uh, some other fun things. Uh, but it's also retail, you know, it's, uh, it's being in a place where people are. Remember the, the, the last note of the grid, nobody lives in the substations, nobody lives in the uh, you know, transmission uh, towers, but they do live at home. Uh, and the people are the, the most important element, the most important variable, and it's most important to have them uh, gain awareness about your offering and invite them in. You know, fundamentally, this means that as they're walking through Home Depot because they're looking for a new you know, toilet seat cover, you need to have a presence, you need to be seen, and if you're going to have any success with your initiative, whether it's energy-driven or otherwise, 
it's going to be because you're both providing and communicating a clear, um, a clear consumer uh, value proposition and uh, persuading people on the spot and finding where you are it requires a good amount of investment, requires a great deal of, of, of partnership. You know, Nest has been most successful in, in some areas of the country by working together, for example, with utility partners, uh, utility partners that uh, see, see Nest as an interesting opportunity uh, to, to get some of their energy objectives, both um, in terms of more better, better efficiency and better capacity management uh, through devices in the home, and you know the wonderful brand halo that you get with that. When we're working together, you know, uh, combined uh, marketing initiatives, rebate initiatives to uh, to introduce better price elasticity. These are some of the areas where we're where we're most successful. But I should highlight, you know, one of the areas where we have, and this I'll, I'll wrap here uh, to open up to questions. I know we're getting close to time. Uh, one of the areas where we've seen kind of the uh, the storm clouds on the horizon, the biggest threat is uh, when folks kind of uh, perhaps think, uh, you know, we think back to Jack Kennedy, you know, ask not what, uh, uh, you know, what, what uh, your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Sadly, you know, for, for better or worse, you know, when we're talking about consumer electronics in, in the home, it's almost an inversion of that. You know, it's, it's not ask, uh, you know, ask not uh, what your utility can, can do for you, ask what you can do for your utility. It is ask what your utility can do for you. That, that is the consumer perspective here. Uh, and, you know, from a utility perspective, there, there are folks that, that want to perceive this as a, as a world, as a, you know, consumer economy where uh, folks, where a critical mass of people will be responsive to some overriding objective, you know, that ah, the smart grid is a good thing because it will help my utility deliver electricity more efficiently and therefore I want to be a part of it. I want, you know, meters bolted to the inside of my house and sure, I want some plastic boxes spread throughout the middle of my house. You know, that's, that's, not, um, that's not our perspective. You know, our perspective is, for better or worse, the environment is, you know, ask, uh, ask what your utility can do for you. And we've seen uh, some critical missteps. You know, some utilities want to make uh, the inside of the home, you know, not if it's not uh, viable in the sense that they can just walk in and bolt what they want to the wall, uh, they like to see a trade-off. They like to see in exchange for their assistance, in exchange for participating in mutually beneficial programs uh, related to helping you and helping the utility save energy, there's uh, been a trade-off imposed in terms of privacy, in, term, in terms of data, you know, wanting to say that you, homeowner, can get my device if only, you know, uh, you agree to have your device beam all the data back to uh, the utility. You know, sometimes with a clear purpose in mind, other times just because we don't know, you know, maybe we'll figure out what the purpose is later and it sure would be helpful to have the data. Nest won't, won't do that. You know, we won't, uh, we won't uh, force a trade-off on, on homeowners of their, uh, their privacy in exchange for, you know, a discount on a device or in exchange for some grid-related functionality. Uh, you know, when we, uh, as the energy industry, you know, think about engaging the last node of the grid, you know, in in this uh, this great purpose, we believe it's critically important to frame all all questions when we're asking to be invited into a home with how does this benefit the home? What do we need in order to help the uh, the homeowner benefit? And try not to uh, make any type of uh, trade-offs that make it difficult for for a homeowner to make the the smart decision to to take those either you know, baby steps or giant leaps to the era of, uh, of the Jetsons together with us. So I'll, I'll pause here. Uh, so I know we're, we're, we started late and we're running late. Uh, happy to take your, your questions. Sir. Oh, it, it, it's huge. If you, uh, if you, Take that, uh, if you, I don't even want to talk about it in terms of perception. If you conduct yourself that way, if you, you're, if you the company, the person who makes hardware, if you, you know, utility, uh, the person who runs the program, frame and construct your program, frame and construct your hardware and your offering uh, in such a way that requires this trade-off of, of privacy, uh, that requires this, you know, uh, submission to a big brother type uh, environment, then perception will catch up with that. The only way to counter that perception is to not work like that. Uh, you know, Nest, uh, you know, coming as, as we have recently in our new uh, corporate uh, parenthood, uh, have, have had to be very careful about how we, um, 
both how we conduct ourselves and how we communicate exactly what we're doing. You know, Nest doesn't share data with Google. Uh, our brand and our trust uh, is, is it's critical to, uh, to preserve that. It's critical to be transparent so that folks can have confidence in that. And the reason why we will never participate in programs that require you know, a violation of, of that trust in our view is because you know, once you uh, betray your brand, it's very difficult to rebuild that. You know, your brand has to stand for something. You have to uh, let people see how you, how you do things. Uh, and you, know, you make one major misstep in becoming Big Brother, a lot of folks aren't going to be soon to forget. Sir. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to take it as a loaded question. I'm going to be careful. Yeah, I'm going to be careful. Uh, I think, um, look, you know, when you're, there's some amazing things going on out there, some amazing innovation, and there are also some things that were built right the first time. Uh, but, you know, many things, many projects of, of enormous scale, if you, you know, knowing what you know now, sure, there are some things you would do differently. Uh, it's outside of our purview to do some of those things differently, but what is within our purview, you know, us and we hope other folks like us, that you know, our partners that are making hardware that, that works with Nest, that, that communicates uh, within our ecosystem and beyond, uh, you know, it's our purview to make this end node work really well, uh, to, to be able to receive uh, communications from the outside, you know, from the rest of the soft grid, uh, to take these inputs and to uh, make our products, you know, ultimately leverage them to serve the homeowner's interest first and foremost, and to make those homeowners, you know, automatically uh, good citizens. You know, to do to do the right thing uh, related to the, um, you know, the achieving maximum efficiency in the distribution of resources and, uh, you know, maximizing capacity at critical times. Sure, back back in the back there. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. It's, uh, Sunrun has been a terrific partner for Nest. Uh, you know, we we welcome partnerships within uh, the the solar space and you know all manner of uh, of distributed generation. Uh, obviously, when you're thinking about uh, generating power, you know it's it's either a large capital investment or a large loan that you're uh, you're taking on to yourself. And it, you know, the solar industry will be the first to tell you it's awful silly to do that before maximizing your efficiency at home. So it's a very clear. Um, especially with the solar leasing company, you know, very clear alignment with, uh, with Nest to find ways to help folks in, in homes uh, maximize their efficiency. But you see, you know, programs like Sunrun, uh, where you can get a free Nest thermostat as part of your solar installation are infinitely uh, more successful than any hypothetical programs where, you know, you could get, uh, you know, a, a, a free roll of insulation or, you know, a free roll of, um, uh, you know, uh, faucet aerators. Uh, not to say that those things aren't important, they're critically important, but uh, with Nest, we're providing an opportunity for our partners in the solar industry to frame a, a user value proposition that's grounded in kind of daily interaction. You know, it provides added value, added excitement, you know, the, the kind of um, you know, the almost non-quantifiable benefit of being able to sit in bed and adjust your comfort without having to get up from under the sheets. Uh, that's that's the, the excitement. It's it's wonderful to have that type of alignment within the energy industry and within consumers at, at the end uh, as well. All, right, um, all the way in the back there. I, I have the microphone right oh, here. Well, then um, whoever has the microphone. Yeah, yeah that's how it works too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Craig Lewis, the Clean Coalition. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I have a kind of a, a personalized question because we just uh, installed two nests in our home for a, a zonal um, heating system. Always good to hear. And uh, my question is, you know, how sure are you that you actually result in in energy savings? In in my case, you know, I'm a I'm a uh, energy efficiency fiend at home, and I freeze my family out. Yeah. So um, in the old thermostats that we replaced, uh, I had it set pretty low, and they didn't. It, my wife and son didn't really know how to use it, so they couldn't ever adjust it up. Yeah. Uh, with the Nest, it kind of automatically goes, and it's very easy to you know set the temperature up or down. Um, but how do you know that you're? How do you feel so confident that you're going to result in 
energy efficiency. Sure. If you, I imagine, you know, in the in the case of folks like us, like like me and and, and you, you know, I'd, very similar uh, scenario when you can imagine the, the the graph with two axes you know there's the uh, there's the energy efficiency and there's domestic bliss uh, and uh, you know there there are, are uh, implicit and explicit trade-offs that, that you make there um, nest is going to you know focus on comfort within the home first and foremost as a way of delivering efficient behavior we're going to see you know, the, the new opportunities that your old thermostat didn't, for example, in the auto away, you know, just when you're outside, when you're away, noticing you're away and turning off, you know, not requiring any other devices to tell us, you know, sensors within the device itself being smart enough to, to know this uh, with some additional features uh, baked into the software like AirWave, you know, making more efficient use of your air conditioner. You're running the, uh, shutting off the compressor early, running the fan over the cool coils to you know, maximize cooling intelligently, uh, customized to the thermal model of your home as we understand it. Uh, you know, you, you are likely, even people like us, even people super efficient to see some savings, even though our significant others and our children are, are notably happier and uh, more comfortable at home. Uh, there are some folks, you know, who may come from a certain extreme who may not see those savings. But when we look writ large, you know, across the full installation of nests, uh, and we have, and I refer you to our blog posts and our white papers on this topic, we have exceeding confidence in the, the, the level of savings that we're, we're able to see across very broad populations um, and relative to, you know, very clear counterfactual scenario of, you know, non-intelligently managed thermostat. You know, you're going to see on average double digit uh, percentage savings in, in, your, uh, in terms of runtime and in terms of energy use. And you're going to see on average triple digit uh, dollar savings each and every year uh, on on your energy bills. Um, you know, Nest has released a number of white papers. We're never allowed to say things before we actually do them uh, publicly at Nest, but you can imagine that maybe we're going to have some other interesting things to say after this summer on that topic. And uh, consider this me foreshadowing for you that we're very pleased to see how uh, how Nest devices are are performing, um, and we think that your energy programs that are predicated on delivering seamless comfort together with efficiency and delivering meaningful savings. You're delivering triple digit annual savings to uh, households. This is an excellent way, uh, you know, despite what any perceived trade-offs uh, you might have to run a program where the end users are going to be you know, happy, healthier, and wealthier. And uh, it's a great, a great relationship between all involved in that program. One, one more question. Um, can you comment on the, uh, the thread uh, wireless spec versus the Zigbee and, and Y thread. Oh, Y thread as as opposed to uh, Zigbee. Right. I mean, you know, the short version is. I'd say actually, I should be more. I should be more careful. I <laughs> was tempted to say the short version is because it's better. Uh, but uh, no, in all seriousness, you know, we we uh, took a very strong look over you know long period of time about how you know. The various standards out there, uh, you know, folks have done some tremendous work evolving the uh, the Zigbee standard. You know, going back to the gentleman's uh, question earlier of, you know, if you were to build something over again from the start, would you do some things differently? That was ultimately the decision we we felt ourselves uh, uh, pushed towards when we uh, helped, you know, to develop Thread and, and to develop uh, Nest Weave on on top of Thread. Uh, in particular, you know, when you just to kind of focus the conversation, because this, this could be a very long conversation on just this topic, and I'm happy to have it with you, but focusing it on kind of the end node of the home and consumer electronics, uh, for us it came down to trying to build a smoke detector that would have six, uh, you know, AA batteries and last for seven years. You know, uh, power consumption uh, was one of our, our most important considerations, and when we, you know, wanted to, uh, to achieve this, uh, we were unable, you know, looking at, at uh, conventional Zigbee applications. So we used some of the techniques that we developed um, to maximize, you know, the ability of a network smoke detector to last that long, you know, again, with a Wi-Fi chip as well as with a, um, you know, Zigbee chip. And we came up uh, with, uh, with Thread. You know, we added both uh, the, the power consumption optimization, we added the, um, you know, some security optimizations, just some other things that, you know, as great as Zigbee is, as, as great work as folks have done, we had, this is perhaps one of those moments where we said, well, you know, if we had to do it over again, and we do, 
what would we do? And we did Thread, and we've opened it up, uh, and we hope to, you know, hope to make it available for folks who have you know, the existing silicon who, are, who already can speak uh, can speak Zigbee. We hope that you'll uh, consider using Thread, and we hope that you'll find uh, some of the benefits that we baked in there for you. All right, Ben. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you.